In America, the land of opportunity, live five elder beauties, four on the main line and one in nearby Philadelphia. These women are friends for life, dedicated to their families, careers, friends, culture, and of course, Hadassah. They continue to nurture others while remembering to nurture themselves. They have the same interests and aspirations as do women in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. They love life and live it to the fullest. These five fashionable female friends in their eighth decade are my role models for aging and living. I affectionately refer to them as bubbies in the burbs. So here they are, bubbies in the burbs. What did I tell you about that? Oh, we're not going to say bubbies because we're too young. Yeah, are we the right. bubbies? I don't want to be around the table. Although I said that, I'm not a bubby in a burb. I would rather be called bubby than mama I, at my age. I would rather be called bubby by anybody. I'm grandma. Okay. Yeah, grandma. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say be a Gigi, a great grandma. Yeah. Oh, I'm a soft and rubber. I already am a great you know, grandma. You know what a great grandma right. is? Soft and rubber. Soft and rubber. This is it. This is the bubbies. What is this? This is our This is the bubbies that have shown up. This is our day. This is the first group. Ruth Poehler is at a big party today. Oh, I figured she'd be here. And I wanted to start with a Kavanaugh for the project. You all know about Kavanaugh? Kavanaugh. The That's intention. Me. My intention for today is just to do a brainstorming. You're not going to be answering all these questions, but uh -huh. these are the questions that you'll answer during our formal interview in October. And what I wanted you to do is take a look and see Funny which guys. one of these questions This would take you. me about two hours. <laughs> and as you're continuing, you ladies are beginning to face some challenges. Oh, I have a lot of challenges. And that's one of the things I want to discuss. Mm -hmm. When Philip died, uh, I was like, oh, what are you going to do? I said, <laughs> I'm not going to do anything different than I did all my life. And all my life I've been busy with volunteering, Me too, with right? babysitting, with doing sure. good things, traveling. So I'm just continuing, and it's wonderful. It when, is. When, you know, if you don't do something, no, it does. It it, either better. you pick yourself up. And you get to Put come back and, and start do, all over right, again, right? Or uh, you continue. Disintegrate. That's what I'm trying to say. What is it called? Challenge. Physical. Challenge. physical. Yeah, physical. The doctor challenge. said inside I'm fine, outside I'm pulling apart. <laughs> uh, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's about nine years ago. You have other physical ailments too. Let's just talk about them for a moment, and then we'll go back because well, I have two knee replacements and. Uh, pacemaker and then your mother was there the night that I famous night that I fell your mother tried to grab me and save me and I fell backwards and broke my hip and that's why I have all the problems I have now it smashed in a million pieces and Dr. Wolf said he didn't think I'd ever walk again but he'll do what he can so he put there's a uh, titanium rod going down here and screws I have a carpenter's kit inside me and that's what enables me to walk no matter how so that's why I want so weird. Because parents call us, well, call Zadie, Bubby and Zadie, and the children call uh, me Bubby all the time. And when Philip died, one little girl said to her, Mom, do you think that I can go light a candle at church Aww. for Zadie? Aww. Well, they know who Zadie is. And she said, of course, you tell them Zadie Phil. And she did that. Well... Philip and I were married when I was um, 19 and he was 20. Well, <laughs> How old was he when he passed? A week before he was 81. But he was a very young 81. Oh, I know. Yeah, he really was. And how long were you married at that 60, point? 60, almost 61 years. And frankly, the title it can be, you know, adjusted or something. It's catchy. Not, it's a very catchy it's, not, it's catchy, but in a different way. If people are saying... Film Bubbies in the Burbs. The, well, the fact that we're in the Burbs is very yeah, much. And, and you're Bubbies. I mean, you are yeah, Bubbies. But you don't <laughs> call yourself <laughs> Bubbies. You're like, not a Bubby. Who really. would just become grandmothers like Elaine Beck. And she wanted to be called Bubby. Yeah, yeah, me too. Right? Yeah, Mom, what's your concept on wanting to be called Bubby? Oh, I love it. Well, I think the title is a, a very fitting. Uh, we're almost all grandmothers and great grandmothers. And we live in a suburban area. 
So the title is most appropriate. Um, what? <laughs> That's ridiculous, Evan. You're wasting, you're wasting film. It costs money, so I'm very, very uh, conscious of um, repairing the world. Uh, I can't think. Tikkun Olam. Tikkun Olam, and I do try very hard to do something good every day for someone else. And whenever I can give someone who needs a ride a ride, I can do shop, do shopping for a neighbor. I sometimes do things like that. Oh. Only in Philadelphia did he use mama. Yeah, well, yeah. Some people use nanny. Yeah, I mean, nanny. Throughout, throughout the world. Nana. I've never heard mama. Yeah. And I, I told you, I've lived in four different cities yeah. until I came here. Brian? Bobby? Grandma? Mama? What's the difference? Things. Do you know my great-grandchildren gave me a name? Well, I don't know who gave it to them, her mother or, or whatever, uh, their mother. Um, a mama mom. A mama mom? Because my daughter is my mom. And so the children, for some reason, and they do say it. That's one adorable. is four, one is eight, and they say mama mom. You've always been involved, as far back as you can remember. Always involved with a synagogue. Always. Or some type of volunteer activity, whether always it was Always into something, giving time. Uh, if they needed help. Doing something somewhere, I said, I'll go, you know, and do it. I'm really up to it today. Do you need to be able to do it tomorrow morning? No. Now you all. It only has to be today. Yeah, but we're going to get her another time. This is right. just the brainstorm. She said going to do it another time anyway. Tell her October the 13th oh, at Bethel, Bethel L from 9 to 12. Wait, you already engaged it? I did. Oh, my God. Can you hear what she said? Yeah, at best hello. Huh. What she when they should ring the bell. do is not go up the steps or go up the ramp, but she's Please so yeah. stubborn. She goes up the steps. Well, oh, I run the Torathon, so I'm here with that. Then there's the Israel Advocacy Committee. Well, and right now, what you might want to record, we're collecting socks for soldiers. Where is Marilyn? What Marilyn, is Marilyn? Marilyn is well known well, for being late. She's been very good lately. Yeah, very good. I'm we surprised. got a train. And it's Here's Mal. I'm enjoying the group. Good to see you. Thank you. Where's the rest of the group? Right here. Well, I have about three calendars, and I don't <laughs> always keep up with each one. And so you I, get mixed up. <laughs> I manage, but I'm always surprised as it, oh my God, I got all that to do today. I'm with Adasa, and uh, it's a uh, it keeps me busy. There are study groups and book clubs and meetings and board meetings. And um, Monday doesn't belong to me. It belongs to Hadassah. Because every Monday there's something doing and I'm doing it. Well, I, I was very active in um, in uh, my synagogue, Beth Hillel, uh, in sisterhood and all the uh, activities that was in, were involved and in synagogue activities too. Uh, I helped uh, uh, several um, uh, vice presidencies and uh, never really aspired to be president. Uh, at the time when it was ready for me wasn't good for me. So I've been very happy to be an Indian. I don't always have to be a chief. The rest of the week, uh, Tuesdays are my play day. I play bridge and mahjong. And... Uh, after that, there's book clubs and uh, maintenance on me. I'm maintenance, you know. Miriam was just telling me that you were such a beautiful suit on uh, Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> what color? Since, since I wasn't it's, here. I it's gray. Unsolicited <laughs> yes, testimony. Yes, yes. Yeah, Miriam it was really liked it. Unsolicited testimony. Yeah, Miriam liked it. I want the same suit, except I wouldn't get it. Oh, well, it's last, it's last year's. <laughs> but it's designed like this year's. It's all boxy. Yeah, well, that's good for me. Oh, I like I like to shop. I like I like nice clothing. I I'm a little vain, like like most people. I try to look my best. I love that haircut. Uh, thank you. I do too. I'm really so pleased. And then see when when I wash it, I guess it won't go up this like this. She said I could gel it a little. Bit. 
<laughs> Look at what we're wearing. You didn't Where's believe it? me when I told you that I want you guys to be famous, and people in Florida want to see this too. You show it in Florida. I'm not so sure. Show it <laughs> yeah. at a, at a closing say, Can affair. you imagine? We're all, we're all going to be under the desk. <laughs> and we went to this Italian restaurant, and we saw this Italian, um, what was he, the receptionist or something? And Esther speaks Italian pretty well too because she was uh, she was in Florence for like six months. And uh, they're talking, talking that I was her mother, and she just lost her father and everything. And he was, oh, what did he say? Bella, Bella, he was... Uh, he, he liked you. He liked me, okay. Then we sat down, we had dinner, and then, and then after dinner, I said goodbye to him, and he kissed me on each cheek, and he was so affectionate. And the little one, Annika, says, Mom... Do you think it's too soon for Bobby to have an affair? Would you consider going on a date or getting involved with a gentleman? Not really. I'm not. Uh, I would not want to that to kind of. Uh, absolutely not. I had one love in my life. And that was. Um, I dabble in the market. Are there any other things that you dabble in? <laughs> oh, I, well, do I dabble? <laughs> I don't, yeah. See, this is fun, isn't it? I don't know what would be considered dabble. Yeah, we could dabble in some men if we could find them. <laughs> would you actually date Marilyn? Let me ask you that because Little gave me a very firm no. My mother said no. Would you date? Yes. Great. If I found someone. Uh, 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 I am very picky. Picky, picky. Well, that's the point. I, I'm sure. Uh, now, I think that women are far superior to men in, in oh, interest man. and intelligence and in worldliness. Ah, and, and in good company. And I think that. Um, <laughs> so, and especially, you know, maybe you know, we should all become lesbians and so. No, that that I never gave you. <laughs> I was just thinking but, what you call. Uh, one thing that I'm missing is sex. It, would have, it, it would have to be somebody very interesting. And Forget it. <laughs> and at 55, I opened my own travel agency from scratch, which if anybody knows anything about opening an agency, it is not easy. Um, and I was very successful. I had it for 10 years. Finally, help was hard to get. Good help was hard to get. And I put it up for sale, and I sold it. Awesome. And I went to work for these people. In the meantime, I'm still attending a Hadassah meeting once in a while because now I'm a little more free. You know, I didn't have didn't have that. So, so, um, I, and I did. I, I'm still working in travel. I I can run a business, and I I run what I'm doing like a business. Uh, the problem is that most people of my age do not like to do anything but uh, a simple thing. I don't care for simple things. Remember, once they do a Hanukkah party, I go to the Hanukkah party. They do this, I go here, I do that. Whatever has to be done, I do. Okay, uh, when I came into a da <laughs> Dasa, uh, they immediately, somehow, I became membership vice president. I mean, I, I didn't even know anything about the organization, too much about the organization, but I guess they needed people at that time, and uh, I became membership vice president. You know, what was so funny. First time I met Ethel, we had a lunch at Doris uh, Bernstein's house, and she came in with a hat. She would just be me. Which hat did I wear? Not sneakers oh, and the sweatpants or shoes. No, she no. was hat. She was with the red black hat. Oh, I don't think it was red. Uh, but anyhow, she came with a hat. And then they had they wanted volunteers for presidency at that time. Oh, yeah. I saw, and I said, well, they said, what do you I said, I, I'm not alone. I had to have that. So I said, I raised her hand. She'll be with me. I said, who is this lady? <laughs> <laughs>